Philip Slavin of the 1012 Podcast here. If you've been listening to this show for a while and thought, you know, if that guy can do this, then so can I. Well, you're, you're probably right. And it's worth giving a shot. The one question you're going to ask yourself is, how do I get my podcast out for everyone to listen to on iTunes, on Spotify? Well, you're going to need a hosting site. And if I may make a suggestion, go with Anchor. It's easy and it's free, which is great for podcast hobbyists uh, who aren't exactly expecting this to make a lot of income, especially starting out. Anchor is fantastic. Anchor by Spotify is the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need in one place. It has the tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And when hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your show on listening platforms like we mentioned Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And again, it is totally free. It's fantastic. It is what we use. And if it's what we use, it's what we're going to suggest to others. So download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Again, that is the Anchor app or anchor.fm to get started with your podcast. Welcome to the 1012, the podcast that covers all 10 teams in the Big 12 Conference, plus BYU, Houston, Cincinnati, and UCF. I am your host, Philip Slavin. Thank you for joining us for a midweek episode. Yep, we were going to start second episodes next week, but here we are. The AP poll came out this week. I immediately wanted to talk to some of the voters who had some of the more interesting uh, decisions regarding Big 12 teams. I reached out to three. I only got one, but that's okay. We're going to talk to him anyways. Uh, He is Ryan Pritt of the Charleston Gazette Mail. He had Kansas State higher than anybody else. We're going to talk to him about his poll, how he views Kansas State, how he views Texas post-injuries, Oklahoma, and of course West Virginia since he is someone who covers the Mountaineers. There were two other voters I reached out to. I won't name names. Uh, They are the two individuals, one who did not have Baylor in his preseason top 25, one who did not have Oklahoma State in his preseason top 25. Not to put them on spot, not to trash them for their opinions or their views. It's a preseason poll, and while it does matter because it sets perception and expectation heading into the season, and it is a big deal. It is a big deal because when you beat a preseason ranked top 25 teams early in the year, even if they end up as a 5-7 and seven team, it's really hard to take the perception you've established early out of your mind because of that early season win. But I'm always intrigued by voters and how they view things. I would like their perspective. I want to hear what they have to say because it may be something that impacts the way I feel and something I have not thought about. So Ryan Pritt going to join us here in just a minute. Since we're doing this uh, late week episode, I do think it's worth talking about the Big Ten media deal that is official, that has been signed and announced, includes Fox, CBS, NBC, and Peacock. There's a lot of stuff that you're going to see that makes you go, oh, oh, this is really interesting. There are a few things here that are interesting or at least raise questions for me. One of them is not the comments about, well, they might not be done with expansion. Of course, you build that into the contract. Of course, you put in a contract that if you decide to add a team or two, that the contract will be adjusted. If Notre Dame decides to come and join the Big Ten, they're not, then we can adjust it. That is not some like, well... They're going to get the rest of the Pac-12 schools. It would make sense for them to add some more schools out west to help with the travel issues that are going to be faced by USC and UCLA. Maybe adding Cal would get the UC Board of Regents off of UCLA's back, and then that would help things. Maybe Oregon really does add a lot for them. I don't see the Big Ten changing anything anytime soon. But again, they signed a seven-year contract. They have plenty of time between now and the end of that contract to readdress those situations. That seven-year contract is something I find interesting. It makes me think that, A, the Pac-12 is definitely not going to sign anything longer than that because Oregon and Washington are not going to want to. None of those schools in the Pac-12 are going to want to because they're all going to want to be able to get out as soon as they can to join the Big Ten if an invitation is offered. That makes me think the Big 12 will probably do something similar. Long, giant, never-ending contracts, unless you're getting what the SEC is going to get from ESPN, just don't make sense. They don't. They don't make sense anymore. Things change too rapidly. Signing some 10, 20, 30-year contract, ACC, is asinine. So short contracts are where I think things are going. The Big Ten got one. I bet the Pac-12 will sign one. I bet the Big 12 will sign one. 
One interesting note from all this, like I said, a couple of things that I think are takeaways for the Big 12, uh, is that Amazon reportedly offered more than CBS and NBC's $35 million per year for that 3.30 primetime game. Didn't go with that. Why? Because the Big 10, who is run by Kevin Warren, who comes to the NFL and understands how the NFL has done business and sees the impact of that, decided to go with something that was more over the airways, which I think is impactful. The question becomes, does Amazon uh, or does Apple legitimately want to get into college athletics, to get into college football and other sports as well? Pac-12 being out in the West Coast is a, is a conference that is attached to them a lot because of, you know, Conference of Technology and, and Forward Thinking and blah, blah, blah. They've never really shown that in the way they've run things over the last, I don't know, decade as Kevin Scott's been in charge. Sorry, Larry Scott. It doesn't matter. I mean, he's gone. But it does make you wonder, will Amazon offer something similar for the Pac-12 or the Big 12? Sorry, Pac-10. we got to get used to calling it the Pac-10. That is a big thing for me. Plus, you know now... ESPN is going to be desperate for content. They're not getting the Big Ten. That means that will they spend more on the Pac-12? Will they spend more on the Big 12? Fox is going to need more than just the Big Ten as football on their network to fill Fox and Fox Sports 1 and Fox Sports 2. It doesn't seem like they care about the Pac-12. That might be a good thing for the Big 12. Fox has never shown much interest in pushing college basketball. They had college basketball. They don't promote it to the level that ESPN does. Is that somewhere you want to house your college basketball if you're the Big 12? There's a lot of questions to be asked. The Big 12 doesn't have to decide them right now. Their contract's not up for a few more years. But it is very important now to pay attention to what the Pac-10 does because it is going to impact what the Big 12 has available to it. It's all very interesting I don't think anything's changed as far as the Big Ten adding Pac-10 schools anytime soon. I don't think it's going to happen. I just don't. I don't. I can be wrong. That's fine. I've been wrong many times, but I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, we will be back again on Monday. Jamie Steyer Johnson, Andy Mitz, my usual cohorts, they are back. I am so excited to have them back. We'll be back to our regular two episodes a week during the season starting next week as well. Daniel Alexander and Chris Ross are back, so our usual College football schedule of Mondays and Thursdays is back. Cannot wait. Very excited. That is next week. This is just a short little bonus episode for you. Just because it's a short little bonus episode doesn't mean you shouldn't go to Homefield Apparel and shop now, like right now, like right away. If you want your gear in time so that you can sit down in week one and enjoy watching your team in the most comfortable college sports apparel that anybody anywhere makes, you need to get your order in. Because I promise you, they just got overwhelmed by Penn State and that Penn State released last week. Ohio State's coming out this week. It's the last big new Saturday weekend. You know they're going to have a ton of orders for Ohio State. So if you are a fan of a Big 12 school because they have every Big 12 school available at homefieldapparel.com, then you need to get your order in now and you need to remember to use the promo code NETWORK12, N-E-T-W-O-R-K-1-2 for 15% off your first order. A lot of things you need to do before the season starts. You need to chop Homefield Apparel, you need to make sure you're following us on Twitter at 1012network, T-E-N, the number 12, the word network. You need to make sure you are subscribed to the show that you have left a rating and a review, please. If you're a YouTube fan, we have the show on YouTube. I make sure and try and get it up within at least 24 hours of when the episode goes live up in podcast form. Will we post videos and do some live stuff on YouTube? That is the goal eventually, but not until I get the baby sleep trained so that we are not having to take care of her all night long that's going to be October, November, probably around the end of the season. One other side note, I just want to put this out there. Shout out to Christine Butterfield, who was the host of the Midwest Madness podcast, our men's and women's basketball podcast. Was is the word. She has got a new job, um, and she is no longer going to be able to serve as the host of our show. This basketball show is very important to me. It's one of the ones we launched from scratch when we launched this network a year ago, and I want it to continue. I want the Midwest Madness show to continue, and I want it to continue to grow. I want it to be the best podcast when it comes to Big 12 men's and women's hoops. So we're going to work to keep the show going until we find a new host, but if you or someone you know really feels like you could do a great job hosting a men's and women's college basketball podcast focused on the Big 12, running interviews, talking about analytics, talking about the teams, covering the schedules that have been coming out. If that's something you have a passion for or would be interested in doing, let us know. Our Twitter DMs are open at 1012network. 1012podcast at gmail.com is our email address. That's 1012podcast, T-E-N, the number 12, the word podcast, 
at gmail.com. Reach out. We are looking for a new host. We're going to post this on social. Okay. We need to find you. By the way, 1012network.com. You can find every show in the network, every show. Go check out the site. Find every show on there. That's all 11 shows. Just bookmark that. You're going to want it all season long. Everybody's rolling. Every show is kicking and killing it. They're amazing. If you're a Big 12 fan and you aren't following one of our shows, you really should be, especially the ones for your school. Yes, we are working on the teams we don't have yet. That's obviously Cincinnati, BYU, Kansas State, and TCU. We are working hard. All right, Ryan Pritt, AP Top 25 voter. We're going to talk about his poll. Let's get to it. This is Brandon Phoenix, a.k.a. I also hate Pitt, joined by my brother, Jeremy J. N. Fiend Phoenix. We are the Raspy Voice Kids. We do the Raspy Voice Kids podcast. If you love West Virginia University, you will love our podcast. If you don't care about West Virginia University, you will love our pop culture segment. It begins every single episode. You can join in the fun anytime, any place. Get at your boys. The first AP poll of the season, the preseason top 25 is out. The, the, I think the poll this year is pretty fair. I think what we saw, but then it's fun to kind of break down individual polls and, and reach out to and talk to and try and pick the brands of those who put teams maybe significantly higher or lower than everybody else did. So I'm very excited today uh, to have Ryan Pritt joining the show. Ryan, you are an AP top 25 voter. How, how long have you been doing this? Uh, a couple of years. This is year two of voting, I believe. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, of course, Ryan works for the Charleston Gazette. Let me let me ask this question. What is your philosophy when when filling it out? Because I've heard kind of two different viewpoints. It's a you know the difference between where you think these teams will end up at the end of the season, or do you kind of go into it as like let me just kind of who I think might be good to start the year. Well, you know the preseason poll is obviously a lot different because we haven't seen anybody play anything yet. I, I'm a resume guy, man. I, I like throughout the season i don't i don't tend to vote where i think a team will be i vote where they should be at that exact moment um and that's kind of how i've done it from the beginning uh and then like i said you know this preseason poll nobody's done anything so this is really just an educated guess but it's kind of it's kind of amazing how fired up people get over this thing uh both in good ways and bad ways for sure yeah i just i think it's to me, I view it, and I, and I appreciate you coming on. I reached out to a few other voters who had some interesting opinions that I thought on, on how they voted. It's interesting to to get different viewpoints because I, it's so weird to me, like, fans, and I get it. Fans are shit for fanatics. You're going to be very loyal to your team. I would expect nothing less. Um, but I do think it's interesting to, to get different perspectives on teams from different people because just because you're – you have a different view than everybody else does. Doesn't mean your view is wrong. Like we've seen year in and year out that the majority is wrong on things, especially heading into the season. Every single year, we see top team ten teams in the preseason finish the season unranked all the time. So, I want to kind of go through at where you have some of the Big Twelve teams on your rankings now. Okay, one of the reasons I brought you on is you have Texas as the highest ranked Big Twelve team at number ten. Now, to be fair, uh, I believe you you ranked Texas here before the news of the two major injuries uh, to Nair and uh, Angela uh, came out. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm curious then if you were to be able to vote today, where would you have Texas? You know, uh, they definitely would drop a few spots. Um, maybe in that 13, 14 range ish. The thing about the big 12 this year, and obviously you're familiar this, this league by far has the most parity of any of the power five conferences, I think. And I don't think it's close. I mean, you're talking six, seven, eight teams in this league that if you told me would win the league, I wouldn't be completely shocked. The thing that I really like about Texas is when you're talking about a running back like Bijan Robinson, and you're talking about a wide out like Xavier worthy. I mean, you're talking about, two guys that you could make an argument are the best two skill position players in the entire big 12. And then you're bringing in a, a kid like Quinn Ewers from Ohio state who's one of the most highly recruited quarterbacks we've seen in, you know, recent memory. And obviously he hasn't played yet, but, but you got a guy like Steve Sarkeesian at the helm of this thing. who's an offensive mastermind. And you just, there are question marks with every team in this league and Texas is, comes on the defensive side of the ball, obviously, but, if you're going to get in a track meet with those guys and you're going to try to score with them, it's going to be really, really hard. And I, I just think with those two guys, it's a pretty easy argument that they may have the best offense in the Big 12, and I, and I valued that. You have Baylor at 12, which is but two spots lower than everybody else. I think that's a fair spot to have them. 
The other reason I brought you on is you have Kansas State at number 14. You are only three people ranked Kansas State, and you are by far the highest on Kansas State of anybody else nationally. Now, now listen, we here at the 10 12 Podcast, we are very high on Kansas State. I think they have a real shot at the Big 12 title game if some things break their way, because obviously the teams that make it are typically the teams who perform really well in close games. But like I said, you have Kansas State at 14. Why, why are you so high on Kansas State this season? You know, when I look, I did in-depth previews of every team in this conference. I, I do an uh, opponent preview for everyone that West Virginia plays. And so when I was doing my research on Kansas State, they have fewer question marks than any team in this league. I mean, you look at every level of the defense, they have an all-Big 12 player on the defensive line, at linebacker, and in the back in the defensive backfield. Talking about a team who brings back Deuce Vaughn, and while we're talking about skill position players, I mean, this kid, you know, he can do it. He might be the most versatile weapon in the entire league. Um, and then you're talking about a team that brings back both of its leading receivers, who, oh, by the way, are what, two of the four or five best return men in the league? Uh, you bring in Adrian Martinez from Nebraska, and what I really like about him is I think he just fits that that team and that program really well. There's a toughness with him. You can knock him for some losses he had in Nebraska if you want or some accuracy issues, but that kid plays and he's tough and he's been around. And I think if he can be average above average, which I think is pretty in the realm of possibility there, they have a good offensive line. They can run the ball. They've got weapons on the outside. They've got a good defense. They've got one of the pass, best pass rushers in the league. And they're always one of the best special teams teams in the league too. And uh, I really, I really love like Coach Kleiman. I mean, this is a guy that's won national titles before, and we just saw this a year ago. Baylor, who who saw Baylor winning the Big Twelve last year before last year happened, right? And in this league, this kind of thing happens and can happen with this much parity. And I just really like this team. I, I don't find many glaring holes on this team at all, less than the rest of the teams in the league, and that's why I have them there. I, I actually wrote a column a few weeks ago and predicted they would win the league. That's how big I am on them. Deuce Vaughn is an X factor for sure. And if you've got one of those, he it can, it can take you a long way in this conference. And again, I mean, we talked about this. One of the participants in the Big 12 game every year is it's never the team picked second. Right. It's typically the team picked third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So, yep. or in Baylor's case last year, eighth. So, I mean, it is it is fair to say a team preseason pick number five in the conference um, could end up there and could potentially win the league. Uh, you've got Oklahoma at 16, Oklahoma State and 17, a little bit lower than everybody else's, though I you know, I, I don't think there's that much of a difference between, you know, 9 and 12 and 16 and 17. What, right. what kind of are your concerns about Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, maybe more so than others? Yeah, Oklahoma, I'm lower on Oklahoma than I think most people are. You know, a lot of the national pundits haven't won in the Big 12, and I saw that they were, you know, predicted to be favored in every game they played this year, and I'm, we're so used to them just reloading, reloading, and we, and we know the tradition there. And certainly, hey, that's a possibility again. If they come out and go 12 and 0, I'm not going to be shocked about it by any means. But you're talking about a team that lost 14 starters, eight transfers. You're bringing in a new coaching staff. Dylan Gabriel is a good quarterback, played at UCF. Obviously, I think this is a step up for him in competition. And there's some there's some injury concerns there. The same concerns I have actually for WU and JT Daniels. I mean, it's a history of this, and, and I think you have to take that into account. Um, but yeah, I mean, Oklahoma certainly has the talent to be there, but when I look at them on paper, when you're talking about that many starters, that many key players, leaving Nick Benito's gone. So, I mean, he was such a huge part of that defense last year. They're just going to have to show it to me, man. I, I, I'm not a guy that just gives it to a team based on tradition, based on what they've done in the past, especially when an entire new coaching staff's involved. So Oklahoma is going to have to prove it to me a little bit first. All right, Ryan, as the West Virginia beat writer for the Charleston Gazette Mail, I, I would be remiss if I didn't at least get your thoughts on West Virginia heading into the season, even though you don't have them ranked in your preseason top 25. What do you think are fair or realistic expectations for the Mountaineers this season? That's funny. I actually have to write my season prediction column on Thursday, and I'm scrambling trying to figure out what to do with this team, man. I it's hard. I, you know, there's a lot of things to like about this team. They return all five offensive linemen, but it's also an offensive line that struggled mightily last year and in the last couple of years. So it's not only experience, you're going to have to find improvement there too. I mean, obviously getting JT Daniels to the portal. I mean, this kid's pretty, pretty experienced, pretty accomplished, especially early in his career. And he's got a couple really nice weapons on the outside, Sam James and, and Bryce Ford Wheaton, who I think has a, has a chance to be a breakout player in this league this year. I mean, he's got the size and the physicality to do that. Caden Prather, too, is a sophomore this year. 
the most highly recruited player in the class before last. And uh, he can be a breakout player too. And, you know, they've got good players on defense. Dante Stills is back, got some key additions in, in the secondary through the portal. And they really, you look at them and they're really a lot like most of the teams in this league. Like you can see a path for them to win eight, nine games. You see a path where they lose eight games. It, it, there's a middle ground there in this Big 12. That, and it's why it makes the league so much fun, man. I mean, these these matchups on a week in, week out basis. I mean, when you're talking about the worst team in the league being Kansas, who's a team who's drastically improving, I think, improved that in the last year. I mean, who, who's ninth? Texas Tech? That's not a gimme win. They've beaten West Virginia three years in a row, you know? So I think a lot of it is going to be really close games, and it's going to be who who can make plays in big spots. And and as we've seen the last couple of years, that's tend to be the uh, the theme in this league. Yeah, it does feel like the top to bottom, the league is the most wide open it's ever been, but also maybe the strongest it's been in a long time. I mean, it doesn't – this might be the year where Kansas starts being a meme and just starts being a loss. And I think both for Kansas and the Big 12 as a whole, like that would be a huge step forward for the conference. Yeah, yeah, West Virginia – I hate where West Virginia gets them in, in their schedule. They get them week two after an emotional rivalry game at Pitt. And I'm telling you, if West Virginia falls asleep in that game, they, Kansas is good enough to beat people this year, like, like you said. Yeah, it's going to be a big game, uh, interesting game to have as a, a week two Big 12 matchup. Ryan, I appreciate your time today, man. Everybody, uh, you can follow Ryan on Twitter at rpritt, P-R-I-T-T. And, of course, if you are living in uh, in West Virginia, check out the the Charleston Gazette Mail, where uh, Ryan covers West Virginia. Uh, I look forward to following your uh, your AP poll throughout the season and, and kind of seeing uh, how you feel about the Big 12 and the rest of the teams in the country uh, as, as we get into the year. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me on. It's been fun.